Good morning, Ms. Von Maxi students. This is Ms. Von Maxi here, and I am so glad that you are here able to join us today in our virtual classroom. Today, I'm going to share with you a really great um, book that is going to help us with story elements today, and it is called A Bad Case of the Stripes. I love this book because it is written and illustrated by David Shannon who wrote a book called No David, which was a very special book in our family when our younger son was little because it was kind of like a No Alex, but this was a No David book. Well, this is a different book, but same illustrator and author. And I want you to see if you can think about the theme for this book. So our story elements are going to be if we can identify the characters, if we can find the setting. We're going to watch for the plot with the conflict and the resolution, and then at the end, what our theme is going to be for the story. How um, did the author try to give you a message? So take a look at that cover. Let's make a prediction about how in the world this child ended up with stripes. Not very common for a human person to end up with stripes. Let's go ahead and start. A little bit on the long side, so it's longer than our normal books, but I think you'll like it. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. So right now the author's already given you a lot to think about. What is on her mind? See if you would scream about this. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right? She asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered. But just look at me. You get back to bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what other kids would say. And she had no idea what to wear with these crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flushes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla told him. I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. I'll just show you up real close because look, even her tongue is striped. How weird is that? I need to take a look at the illustrations here. See if you can make a prediction of what she's doing. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Cran and Night of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything were normal, but when the class led the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. Kind of looked like she would blend in at a football game. Uh oh, look at that one. She's got a whole bunch of everything. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard. And a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon, everyone was calling out different patterns and shapes and colors. And poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. Seems like everyone's having a good time, except Camilla. Um, that night, Mrs. Harms. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a distraction. And I've been getting calls from uh, the other parents. They're afraid those stripes might be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago, everybody liked her. Now, no one wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans but she'd been laughed at enough for one day. If you can make a prediction, you're headed towards the end of the book. What's going on in your thoughts right now? Here we go. We've got some more doctors on the scene. I'll let you take a nice long look from head all the way down to her toes. Oh. Hmm. Well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in a specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the Creams. This is Dr. Crop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialists went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed, tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Crop. Or the measles said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Crop. Then he filled the then they filed out the door, followed by Dr. Bumble. See if you can make a prediction about what's going to happen next. Remember, she's going to take the medicine. Give you a moment. See if you imagined death. <laughs> that night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. Then she woke up the next morning. She did feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, staring back at her, was a giant, multicolored pill with a face on it. Oh, my goodness. I think I might pack out. Uh oh, we got all these tentacles and all of these at the end. Definitely looked like they have the scientists kind of freaked out. Dr. Bumble rushed as soon as Mrs. Cream called, but this time instead of the specialist, he brought the experts. Dr. Gordon and Dr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prod, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Dr. Mr. Mellon. Out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. So you can see those yellow fungus blotches she's got there. Oh. The experts looked at Camilla and then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again at the, at the lab. Dr. Gord explained, we'll call, we'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. Hmm. Oh, dear. So what is going on here? So we have all the news reporters. It's going crazy. We have police on the site. I think it's, this one's funny. Full color tattoos. Someone's trying to catch in on her trend. I don't think she wants that. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped out on the front lawn. You can see that there's, they are even pounding on her door, trying to get to talk to her family. How would you feel on that? If you were, if you were in this situation, how would you feel about the media being on you? 
Well, this is how she feels. Quite a weird feeling. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists and allergists and herbalists and nutritionalists and psychics and an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. It's a dog doctor. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to recognize her anymore. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. So we could, I'll let you take a look at her one more time. Here's her long furry tail. She's even got feathers. Poor thing. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, groaned Camilla. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth, her nose was a dresser, and two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Mrs. Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. She began to sob. So, in our story elements, what is our conflict now? I'll give you a moment to pause. We are right in the middle of the conflict. If you said something like, Camilla's got a problem and she keeps adapting into everything, you're on the right path. So let's see if we can find a resolution. At that moment, Mrs. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. She opened it and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. Moment at this picture. I like her bag because it reminds me of a very hungry caterpillar. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What have what we hear is a bad case of the stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans? Asked Mrs. Cream. Oh, my no, replied the kind old woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big, heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything. But she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima beans, especially me. So in your head, what is Camilla doing? And what do you think Camilla needs to do? Oh dear, said the old woman sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and started towards the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would, be, would taste so good. And being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she'd been going through. Finally, she couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Then. Suddenly, branches and feathers and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. So, think about what kind of message Camilla just learned. Do we have a resolution to the problem? 
Lima beans were definitely a resolution, but it's also tied to our theme. So I'm gonna take a look at the next page. Camilla wasn't, after what? Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted and she never even had a touch of the stripes again. All right, so let's go through our story elements. Our main characters were Camilla. You could also say the doctors and her parents. You could also say the little old lady with the beans. But the main character, of course, is Camilla. The, set, the setting of the story, most of it is going to take place in what location? If you said school, that would have been, been at the beginning of the story. But most of the story is taking place at home. And our resolution was the little plump lady at the door who offered her the lima beans. So it seems like lima beans were the magic trick. But it wasn't just that they were a magic trick because there are no magic beans. It took the theme of the author wanting you to understand, to stay true to yourself, and that no matter what other people think, still continue to eat your lima beans or do the things that make you special. All right, so that is a bad case of the stripes, and I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Have a great day, everyone.